Hi everyone, myself Ashlyn Matthew and I'm going to talk about random experiment. We are all familiar with what is an experiment. So something that is unfamiliar may be the term random attached with this experiment. Therefore, we are going to discuss about what is a random experiment and some things that are associated with a random experiment. We are all familiar about what is an experiment. So, if I am performing an experiment and I am repeating it a lot number of times in a homogeneous condition, or in a very similar condition where there are no external factors affecting the experiment and if the outcome or the result of this experiment is unique after each of the repetitions or is a certain value then we say such an experiment is a deterministic or a predictable experiment. That means we can predict it, its outcome even before the experiment. Now, if I have the same conditions, I am repeating the experiment a number of times in a homogeneous condition or in a similar situation where there are no external factors and if the result is not unique but may be one of the several possible outcomes, then such an experiment is said to be unpredictable or probabilistic. So we have already come across both these experiments in our life. We have already done in our schooling a lot of laboratory experiments. We know the perfect gas equation. We know the Ohm's law. And we know even before doing it that this is going to be the answer. So such experiments are said to be deterministic or predictable. The unpredictable or probabilistic experiments are also familiar to us. Tossing a coin. To break the ties as a tie breakers, we have already used or we have always used tossing the coin. So tossing the coin, while tossing the coin, we don't know whether we are going to get a head or a tail. But still, we go for the chance and we do toss the coin. So tossing the coin is an experiment where the result is unknown. But we know it may be either a head or a tail. Similar is the situation where we go to play the snake and ladder. We do have a die and we throw that die and we wait for that one to occur or the six to occur. Similarly, when we play Ludo. So for the games, we have already gone or we have already used these unpredictable or probabilistic experiments a lot. So here comes the chance or here comes the randomness because we don't know what the outcome is. But we know it is one among the possible outcomes. So here comes the randomness and here is the random experiment. So random experiment can be defined as follows. If in each trial of an experiment conducted under identical situations or identical conditions, the outcome is not unique but may be any one of the possible outcomes, then such an experiment is called a random experiment. So if I am tossing or if I am throwing a die, then in each throw of my die, the outcome may be any of those six phases. It could be one, two, three, four, five or six. 
but we don't know which is going to come to the die. So such an experiment is called a random experiment. While discussing about random experiments, we must be familiar about some terms. So such a term is outcome. This term we have already used or we usually use in our vocabulary. So it has the same meaning in random experiments or in statistics also. An outcome is a result of a random experiment. So if I am throwing a die, the phase I am going to get is an outcome. Next is a term trial. We know what that trial is. Any performance of random experiment is called a trial. So, if I am throwing a die twice, I have two trials. Next is an important thing that we have not yet discussed and that is events. The outcome or a combination of outcomes is called an event. If I was throwing a die and I say that the event of interest, the event of interest or I want a number that is an even number. So the outcome can be or the outcomes can be 2, 4 or 6. So there is a combination of outcomes and either one of it if it is any one, if I am throwing a die and if I get a 2, then that is an event. If I get a 4, then that is also an event. And if I get a 6, that is also an event. So, that is how we define an event. Now, while dealing with events, we come across different type of events. And those are, first one is exhaustive events. The other one is mutually exclusive events, then equally likely events and finally independent events. So the first one is exhaustive events. The total number of possible outcomes of a random experiment is known as exhaustive events or exhaustive cases. Same example for this exhaustive events is in tossing a coin there are two exhaustive cases that is head and tail we always mind that or we always think that the coin does not stand on its brim so there are two exhaustive cases the head and the tail while tossing a coin next is a mutually exclusive event the mutually exclusive events can be said as if the happening of one of the events prevents the happening of any of any other of the events or any other events then such events are said to be mutually exclusive. For example, in throwing a die, all the faces, all the six faces numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 are mutually exclusive. Since if any one of these faces comes, then the possibility of others showing up in that same trial is hindered. Next is equally likely events. So if all the events have equal chance to happen, then such an event is called equally likely event. We can take the same example as throwing a coin. So in throwing an unbiased coin or in throwing a fair coin, both the head and tail has the equal chance of showing up. So both those events are said to be equally likely events. Next is the independent event. If the happening of an event is not affected by the supplementary knowledge or by the 
other knowledge or by the other remaining events then those events are said to be independent events so as an example to independent events we can say that in tossing an unbiased coin the event of getting a head in the first toss is independent of getting a head in the second toss so getting a head in the first toss is independent of getting a head in the second toss so that is an example of an independent event there are a lot other events like favorable events so the favorable events can be defined as a number of cases the favorable to an event and a lot others are there while dealing with events so i have given some of the important type of events that is exclusive events or mutually exclusive events exhaustive events equally likely events and independent events i hope this video is useful thank you